Hi, Denny Johnson again, and we're about to explore the four different primary energies of the human body and the psyche, and how that relates to the spiritual body and the soul. These four different energies are composites of different parts of the family tree. Everything that you see in red over here is primarily the grandparents from the father's side of the family. These contribute to the ascending and descending forces of the yang, or the masculine side of the family. Those on the other side in the blue, they're relating to the mother's side of the family. The triangles are men and the circles are women, and these are the grandparents and great-grandparents from the mother's side. These are the ones that are primarily responsible for the ascending and descending forces of the yin. Each one of these four different categories of ascending and descending forces, they're directly related to different iris constitution types. These iris constitution types, if you've been following that information, they're what's called the movement or the shaker type. This position here also regulates all of the movement in the body. So any form of disorder in the body relative to body movement, any form of uh, involuntary or um, voluntary movements that are obstructed in some way, these are all related to the ascending forces. These are also related to circulation, related to the blood and the heart and the brain and the pituitary. These are also related to the experiences of the immune system and the lymphatic system and the experiences of the neuromuscular system and the fascia. This is the area of the bones and the digestion. There are many other processes involved here as well, such as the experiences of, of the reproductive systems are also down here, but this is an overview. And eventually we will describe each one of the characteristic symptoms that you can discover from different parts of the family tree. So if a condition occurs, for example, in the area of the shoulders or the head, then something is involved in what we call areas number five and six. Five and six have to do with the areas from the shoulders up, three and four from the solar plexus and the chest region, and then number one and number two, they're related to the lower parts of the body from about the navel down into the hips. These are the three primary locations. These three different locations, they're related to attitudes about myself on the lowest level, the attitudes I have about and belief systems about relationships in some form. Five and six have us to be about my attitude about larger things such as ecology or religion or anything that encompasses the whole planet. So the differences, just diameter, the ones in five and six affecting the throat, shoulders, and head, they're primarily attitudes about larger experiences. Those experiences relative to my relationships to people or my community, they're the ones affecting the middle of the body. Those ones primarily affecting the lower parts of the body, there are things about myself, self-image, self-survival, lots of very personal issues about how I feel about who I am, where I'm from. So these are the basic differences. So different types of conditions and different parts of the body, they will correspond to these ascending and descending forces. Now in the physical functions of the body, this is the one that affects the movement. This is the one that also affects the descending yang, affects the assimilation. Everything related to digestion, assimilation, also everything related to the immune system and how that either attacks the body or protects the body. The immune systems also and the lymphatic systems are involved in the return of protein to the body in some form. And this system here is very much related to my attitudes about my own sense of self-will, my feelings about security and belonging, my feelings about uh, being unified globally, such as in ecological issues or global phenomena. This is a very significant area because it's also involved in the experience of personal regeneration or healing. Now this is also in the uh, 
iris analysis part of this for the red practitioners. This is the stream. So anybody who has a stream constitution, this is the primary constitution of the stream. This is the primary constitution of the shaker. And the stream and the shaker, they are a relationship composite that creates a circulation of life force primarily regulated by the relationship patterns from the father's side of the family. On the other side is the metabolic function, which is a very significant function involving everything from the lungs, not often considered in the metal metabolic arena, the lungs in relationship to the pancreatic function, which is the regulator of the biochemical forces of the body, and then those things related to the parathyroid, which is pretty much like the capstone or the pilot light to the energy systems. This is the ascending yin. These are also very much related to attitudes I have about who I am and my relationship to the divine. This is very much affected by my feelings about myself as well. This is the experience of how I feel about relationships toward others. And this is the area very much that affects the pancreatic region and also the bowels. This is about the experience of treachery, betrayal, jealousy, greed, all the basic things that people like to engage in. This is the experience of how these three regulate the metabolic potential of the body. But all of the metabolic potential of the body needs to be activated by a choice or a desire which sends it into the energy systems of the yang forces. So the yin integrates with the yang when there is a decisiveness to have a desire to accelerate my actions toward my own specific passion. So when I make a free will choice to be myself, it ignites a passion, accelerates the ascending forces of the fire, this integrates into the physical body and brings health, well-being, and success. If I have a metabolic system that provides a lot of energy but has nowhere to go, it contributes to the experience of weight gain or obesity. This is a very significant system. On the next level of it is the uh, urinary or water system or the elimination systems of the skin and the bowels and the kidneys and the bladder. This is a, a system of the skin and how it eliminates. This is a circulatory function that cleans the body. This is the liquid function of the body. But beyond just the liquid function of the body, it has a lot to do with feelings. So at the bottom of this is feelings about my own and mirrored self-image, feelings about how I am in relationship, do I have a demanding or needy way? Do I have expectations of others? Do I seek to emotionally control or to manipulate? This is a very significant area because it also relates to probably the most difficult of all diseases on earth to be able to deal with, which has a lot to do with diabetes and all of the metabolic functions about how the forces of the spleen and the heart, the pericardium and the bowels this venous part of the heart is connected to the kidney function and how this function is related to the arterial functions of the opposite side of the heart. Later we will go into each one of these because each one of these has a different type of grandparent memory. Is there a pattern of uh, emotional jealousy or um, some form of envy or greed in the ancestry? Did parents go through a extreme time like the depression when there was no food or there were losses or hopelessness. These feelings strongly affect this part of the family tree and this part of the body. These are the descending yin forces. These are the ascending yin forces and they circulate. This is a very important part of how the cleaning and the metabolic potential of the body is created and regulated. When the yin moves, it gives its life force to the yang, and the energy now is used to create fire in the belly, fire in the heart, fire in the head, 
These are involved in the feeding and the regeneration of the physical body. All four of these different energies are very important. All four of these we have operating all the time. Depending on the iron structure, we have a tendency to use one of them dominantly. And then the other three, they don't operate as well. The goal is to use all four of these simultaneously to bring an optimum capacity for the body to be able to create its potential and to manifest it through action into success, well-being, and happiness. This is an overview of the four different systems inside of all of us and how they are related to the individual iris structures like the shaker and the stream, the jewel and the flower. That's enough for now. Come back and we'll do the rest of the typical body symptoms of each one of the different forces and how you might use them to understand yourself or someone else. Be well.